John Solomon, show. you played a role in two very big stories surrounding this. One is that for some time now that Ukraine and the government have wanted to give America evidence of their efforts to influence the 2016 election. I thought Democrats and the media cared about that, but if it's not Trump, apparently not. Um, that's number one. Why don't we start there? Yeah, so listen, it is fact, not a conspiracy theory, that Hunter Biden received more than $3 million to his private investment firm in the United States and $250,000 to his private law firm from a Ukrainian gas company as shortly after Joe Biden, then the vice president, was named to oversee the Ukraine-U.S. relationship. That is a fact. It is a fact that in November of 2015, Vice President Joe Biden was advised by the New York Times that his son was under investigation, and his office acknowledged they were aware of the investigation by Ukraine authorities, uh, but that it was Hunter Biden's to deal with. A month later, it is a fact that Vice President Joe Biden made his first request to Ukraine President Petro Poroshenko in December 2015 to fire the prosecutor that was leading that investigation into Burisma Holdings, the company that had paid Hunter Biden. It is a fact in March of 2016, it's not a conspiracy theory, it is a fact that Joe Biden, knowing that that prosecutor was investigating his son and aware that his son was about to be interviewed in, in conjunction with the case, it is a fact that he leveraged the $1 billion in U.S. aid and forced Poroshenko to fire uh, uh, the general prosecutor named Shokin, who was overseeing that investigation. Those aren't conspiracy theories. Those are facts. And there's one other fact. It is a requirement of U.S. law that all federal officials avoid the appearance of a conflict of interest when conducting U.S. policy. That means if your family member has a financial interest in the outcome of a decision you are about to be involved in, you're supposed to recuse yourself. Joe Biden Biden knew his son had a financial interest in Burisma, he had a financial interest in that prosecutor. Instead of recusing himself, he thrust himself directly into the middle of firing that prosecutor. That is one of the most compelling issues and damning uh, set of facts that, I've, that anybody has ever laid out. Now, Peter Schweitzer has done the same thing as uh, in his book, which is a bestseller, which is Secret Empires, and it even goes deeper, and both of you have also followed the issue of Biden and his son and as it relates to business in, in China, but let's stay focused on Ukraine for a second. Peter Schweitzer, uh, in your book, you go into chapter and verse, what happened here, why don't we, follow, why don't we go through that? Sure, and let me just say, I mean, John's done a terrific uh, service uh, in, in bringing out to moving this narrative forward uh, for the American people. But, you know, what all the people who say this is conspiracy theory don't want to deal and discuss is the simple fact that Joe Biden was put in charge as the point person in U.S. policy towards Ukraine by President Obama in 2014. A couple of months later, Hunter Biden gets this sweetheart deal from Burisma, this corrupt natural gas company. And they end up paying him according to financial records. This is not speculation. We actually have the financial records. He was getting about $83,000 a month. Now, the problem is, Sean... Well, that, slow down. Uh, he was getting $83,000. Was that going directly to him or to the firm he was working for? Well, so it went into an account that his firm held. There were two payments uh, that came a month of $83,000, one for him, the other one for Devin Archer, his business partner, who was also put on the board of Burisma. Uh, and then, you know, Hunter would take out hundreds of thousands of dollars out of this account. But it's very clear that the board service and consulting fee for him was $83,000, and it was $83,000 a month uh, for his business partner. And, and the problem is, Sean, as with China, um, he has no background in, and no expertise in anything that would be useful to Burisma. He has no background in energy. He has no background in natural gas. He's no background in Ukraine. And so the central question that, that all the people who dismiss this don't want to deal with is he wasn't selling his expertise. What was Hunter Biden selling? He was selling something. He was getting paid a lot of money for it, and the Ukrainians were paying for something. And that's, I think, the central heart of this story, and it gets then moved forward because with Joe Biden being the point person on Ukraine policy, um, he's in charge of a Obama administration initiative to rejuvenate the Ukrainian energy industry, the natural gas industry, of which Burisma is part of. Joe Biden 
China's point person on the distribution of more than a billion dollars in U.S. aid and Western aid that goes to Ukraine, and some of that money is run through the accounts of oligarchs who are connected to Burisma. I mean, this is a tangled web in so many ways, and what they are hoping uh, is to sort of dismiss this, to have this go away. There is no rational or logical explanation as to why Hunter Biden was being paid this money by Ukrainians, other than it was a pay-to-play system. Whether they're paying him for services rendered, or whether they're paying him some kind of retainer, because they want to tap his access and his power and his contact with his father, we don't know. But I think the American people should know, because, Sean, this is unprecedented. I mean, we've had situations before where politicians, family member, you know, you go back to Billy Carter, you had a situation with Neil Bush, but it's nothing in comparison to what we've seen with Hunter Biden, where he literally went around the globe and struck lucrative deals with foreign governments and foreign oligarchs and cashed in while his father was vice president. So it's a, you're talking about two checks per month for 83 grand each. Yeah. One went to Hunter Biden. The other went to, I guess, his business partner, Devin Archer. Does Devin Archer have any background experience in energy or natural gas? No. No, none whatsoever. His background is he was a business partner with Hunter Biden in this, and he was the a finance co-chairman for John Kerry's 2004 campaign. And, of course, remember, at this time in 2014, the Secretary of State is John Kerry. So you have the vice president's son and a former finance co-chairman for the John Kerry campaign cashing in while Joe Biden is vice president and John Kerry is Secretary of State. That's why it's so ironic when John Kerry came, you know, to Joe Biden's rescue this weekend to proclaim his innocence in all of this. Um, you know, his his uh, his family, in some respects, but more specifically in this case, uh, one of his fundraisers is directly involved in this. Stay right there. We're going to pick it up. Uh, another piece to all of this is, well, it was actually the State Department that sent Rudy Giuliani, New York City's mayor, on a mission to Ukraine, uh, a fact-finding mission, which is how his involvement took place. We also now know the Washington Post is saying there was no quid pro quo. Uh, but the fact, well, why would a vice president of the United States of America leverage taxpayer dollars funding uh, for Ukraine when, in fact, uh, there would be no other, oh, you're not getting the billion unless you fire the prosecutor. The, who's the prosecutor? The prosecutor is the one that's investigating Burisma, the gas company, that is paying a fortune to his son, uh, Biden. Uh, we'll take a break. More with John Solomon, more with Peter Schweitzer. All right, as we continue, uh, John Solomon, investigative reporter, Peter Schweitzer, author of Secret Empires. I want to go back to real quick question. We'll get into more detail in the next half hour. John Solomon, why would a vice president leverage a billion taxpayer dollars and say, I'm leaving in six hours? You're not getting the billion. That prosecutor's not fired. You're not getting the billion dollars. Why would any vice president ever do that except that that's Burisma, that is the company that is paying his son a fortune. Well, that's the question, right? That's why we need to get more facts and evidence so that we can find out exactly what it was that was Joe Biden's motive at the time. Here are facts we do know, things that are in evidence. I interviewed the prosecutor who was fired as a result of Biden's pressure. His name is Victor Shokin. I interviewed him for a long time. Uh, ABC News also interviewed him. He told us both the same story, which is at the moment he got fired, he was preparing to make a formal interview request to make Hunter Biden come in to Ukrainian authorities and answer, why did you get so much money out of this company and why were you sending it to the United States? That was the question he wanted to ask Hunter Biden. And as part of that, they had some suspicions that maybe some of this was designed to influence his father or uh, as lobbying money for his father. They want to ask the question. Now, that doesn't mean Hunter or Joe Biden did anything wrong yet. But it is clear that prosecutors were at a crucial stage in the investigation. All right, real at quick. The moment. How, how, how long? Do, the prosecutor fired. We're going to pick up on the other side. How long did these payments go on for? Eighty-three thousand dollars a month to Hunter and his partner, Peter Schweitzer. Real quick. Well, they started in the spring of 2014, and they ended uh, earlier this year. He remained on the board, so you're talking about millions of dollars. Quick break. We'll come back. This is all blowing back right in the Democrats' face, and now the person that really needs to be investigated would be Joe Biden and Hunter Biden. 
not Donald Trump. John Solomon, investigative reporter, Peter Schweitzer, Government Accountability Institute president and author of Secret Empires. We'll pick it up on the other side. We are... Sean Hannity is on right now. Mr. Vice President, how many times have you ever spoken to your son about his overseas business dealings? I've never spoken to my son about his overseas business dealings. And so how do you know? Let's, let's how talk, do you know? Here's what I know. I know Trump deserves to be investigated. He is violating every basic norm of a president. You should be asking him the question, why is he on the phone with a foreign leader trying to intimidate a foreign leader? If that's what happened, that appears what happened. You should be looking at Trump. Trump's doing this because he knows I'll beat him like a drum. And he's using the abuse of power and every element of the, the of presidency to try to do something to smear me. Everybody looked at this, and everybody's looked at it and said there's nothing there. Ask the right question. Well, Peter Ducey did ask the right question. A very angry Biden yesterday. Hang on a second. Who's intimidating who here? Because we just played, and we've been playing all day, Joe Biden intimidating the the Ukrainians and saying, uh, you fired. Listen, you're not getting a penny. You're not getting a billion. I'm leaving in six hours. And if the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the billion dollars. So who's intimidating who here? That would be Biden intimidating the leaders of Ukraine to fire the guy that, as Peter Schweitzer said in the last segment, yeah, that guy that was about to bring Biden's son in and say, well, why are you getting $83,000 a month? And why is your partner getting $83,000 a month? Uh, that's gone on for years, and your father steps in just before he's about to question you by, about this corrupt oil company. Now, do we so we know for a fact, uh, Peter Schweitzer, he had no background in anything oil, energy, gas related, correct? That's correct. Uh, Hunter Biden's background uh, before his father uh, became vice president was as a lobbyist. Uh, he worked for a lobbying friend of uh, Joe Biden's who helped um, universities and others get earmarks in legislation. And then he ended up being a lobbyist for the online gambling industry. When his dad is elected vice president, he opens up a business uh, with a couple of his friends. One of them is Chris Hines, the stepson of John Kerry. Uh, the other one is Devin Archer. The, the company is called Rosemont, and it has several branches. Um, one of them is called Rosemont Seneca Partners. They end up doing deals in China. In the case of Ukraine, this is something that involved Hunter Biden and Devin Archer directly that they ran through one of the cutouts uh, from Rosemont. And this notion, Sean, that they never discussed uh, business um, uh, together is laughable, and it's actually contradicted by Hunter Biden himself, who was forced to kind of give a response to New Yorker magazine a couple of months ago on this subject, and he admitted that he and his father talked about this. Um, so, you you know, they can't even get their stories right, father and son, as to exactly what they talk about and when. And, John Solomon, go back, because you were telling us in the last segment how, in fact, you know, th this prosecutor in this particular case, you spent hours with him. So this prosecutor yeah. was suspicious about these payments. Oh, yeah, that's exactly right. And, it, it and he was about to bring Hunter Biden to Ukraine to say, uh, why are you getting all of this money? And why was that gas company being... Why was the gas company paying him in the first place? What was he doing for the money? Well, that's a question that the Ukraine prosecutors really wanted to have answered, right? Uh, and remember, he was a board member and also paying himself as a consultant. That's very unusual to have a fiduciary role and get you know payment as a board member and also paying himself as a consultant at the same time. And so that was some of the stuff that the prosecutors wanted to get to the bottom of. Well, explain what that arrangement is, though. A board member, because it's, what, 83000 for him, 83000 for his uh, uh Partner, I guess, with Devin Archer, you said. All right, so but those are not marked as those are not marked as board fees. If you look at the ledger that I got from Brisma Holdings, that I actually have the company's ledger. It states that those were consulting payments, so they were not board fees. Now, maybe they misnamed them, mis uh, maybe they had the wrong listing on them, but normally a board fee is a board fee, and a consulting fee is a consulting fee, and that's one of the things that prosecutors were trying to resolve. All right, Peter, you want to add to this? No, I think John's exactly right. I mean, look, this is there is murkiness here, and the problem is that in the Biden family, the two biggest deals that, that Hunter Biden did are in China and Ukraine. These are two countries that sad, sadly are riddled with corruption. 
and they're both countries where Joe Biden was the point person for Obama policy. I don't think that is by coincidence at all. And it's precisely these types of issues. What are people being paid for? What are their roles? What is their expertise? Um, that's so murky. And I think one of the things that the media ought to insist on is that the Bidens come clean. How much was Hunter being paid? What about other deals out there involving other entities? We know we got money from a Kazakh uh, oligarch. What was that about? Well, let's talk about it. What is all that about? Well, we don't know. There's, there's a uh, Morgan Stanley uh, financial account that came out in a court case. Uh, Devin Archer was put on trial for fraud charges unrelated uh, to these cases. And that um, financial record shows money coming into the accounts. Now, the person that uh, took the most money out of that account uh, financially uh, was Hunter Biden. Uh, he would get payments on a regular basis. Uh, money would be taken out and given to him on a regular basis. Going into that account was the Burisma money. But there was also $145,000 from a Kazakh oligarch. There was $1.2 million from a um, sort of alphabet soup LLC. We don't know what the company was, but it came from a Swiss bank uh, that has been implicated in international money laundering. This is all money that's flowing into an account that is uh, going uh, in part, in large part, to Hunter Biden. Um, these are all foreign policy areas where Joe Biden is active and involved. And, you know, it goes back to the heart of the question. I asked before, Sean, he didn't have any of these clients. He wasn't doing any of this work before his father was vice president. So what was he being paid for? He was not being paid for his expertise. And these foreign governments were paying him large sums of money for some reason. What were they expecting or what were they getting in return? Boy, that's John, there's a really fascinating detail. So remember, John Hines, the stepson of uh, Secretary of State Kerry, is a business partner in Rosemont, but he chooses not to be part of this Ukraine arrangement. So they set up a, a sub company to collect the money. As soon as Hunter Biden is announced on the board, John Hines writes the top two aides to his father at the State Department and says, I'm not involved in it. Just so you know, this is not me. I'm not involved in it. He wanted to distance himself at the very beginning of this Ukraine relationship with Hunter Biden. He wanted nothing to do with it. And he made that clear to the State Department. That's an email that was released under FOIA recently. All right. Let's 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 go a little bit deeper because you went through the the timeline earlier uh, in, in great specificity and detail, John. Where do you see this story now going? Because well, my sources today telling me that there's a lot more to drop on this. Yeah, there there is. Remember, I filed a lawsuit a couple of a months ago with the help of the Southeastern Legal Foundation, and we expect to begin to get documents later this fall about whether Hunter Biden, Burisma, its lawyers, had any contact with the State Department in Kiev or in Washington. And I think that will be a very illuminating set of documents when they come out. But here is the key thing. Joe Biden has now staked out a very clear position. My firing of the prosecutor had nothing to do with my son's case. That's the position he holds right now. We ought to see what happened. But, the, but the timeline would show just the opposite, wouldn't it? Well, because the timeline well, the is... The timeline does, but even more importantly... Let's look at what happened in the few days just before the firing and the few days right after the firing. I hope to have a story later this week that's going to bring some pretty large revelations about what was happening the few days before and the few days after uh, Pr Prosecutor Shokin was fired. Now, I already gave you one tip, but he was preparing to force Hunter Biden to submit to an interview in Ukraine. But there's some other developments that were going around that, that look awful suspicious if your story is, this prosecutor and this firing had nothing to do with Hunter Biden and Burisma. Those will come out later this week. When you were asking the prosecutor that did get fired what he thought about the vice president of the United States demanding this, and it, that's why it's such a joke when Joe Biden says, oh, Donald Trump is intimidating Ukraine. I'm like, no, the intimidation of a foreign leader would be from you. Uh, and frankly, you leveraged American tax dollars. So I, I, I'm not sure where Joe's going here, and he seems to be boxed in, doesn't he? Yep, and that prosecutor told me flatly when he was given his final uh, pink slip from the president, President Poroshenko. President Poroshenko told him, the reason I had to fire you is you got Joe Biden mad by looking at his son. That's what the prosecutor told me. So when he gets fired, he claims the Ukrainian president said, Joe Biden was mad at you for looking at his son. You stepped in a hornet's nest. You've got to go. 
let's find out if that's true. That's that's what we got to go now report out. Let's see if Joe Biden had a conversation about Burisma, whether the Burisma lawyers were taking advantage of Joe Biden's effort to fire this guy. That's the next saga in this story. And what about China, Peter Schweitzer? And both of you have been on that issue, but Joe Biden flies to China on Air Force Two. Hunter Biden is on the plane. Give a quick summary of what happened there and how much money is involved and what area of expertise did he have weeks after that trip to make this deal for how much money? It ended up being for $1.5 billion. That's with a B. Um, and the, the, what's, the time, on, what's the timeline on this? So December of 2013, Joe Biden goes for a trip to Asia uh, to meet with Chinese officials. A lot of sensitive issues to discuss. Hunter Biden is on the plane with him on Air Force Two. We don't know what Hunter Biden was doing. He was not on the public schedule. But 10 days after they returned uh, to Washington, D.C., Rosemont Seneca Partners got a $1 billion, later expanded a $1.5 billion private equity deal from the Chinese government. And, Sean, this deal was unusual. Nobody else had this deal through the Shanghai Free Trade Zone, not Goldman Sachs, not Bank of America, not Deutsche Bank, nobody. For uh, a, a guy, Hunter Biden, who had no background in China, um, and his, his limited involvement in private equity was a failed investment fund that ended up getting him and his uncle, James Biden, sued um, on fraud charges. So suffice it to say, it's not as if he had spent time in private equity in a successful way. And yet the Chinese government sought to give him and his firm this massive private equity deal. Now, the initial claim that the Bidens made when, when this story came out in Secret Empires, and Sean, I was on your show to talk about it, uh, was that uh, Joe Biden uh, didn't know about it, uh, that Hunter Biden did not conduct any in, in, in official business, and there was no overlap between the two. They've now been forced to admit that, yes, okay, Hunter Biden did take his Chinese partner who was setting up this government fund with him. He did take him on that visit on Air Force Two to meet his father. So already they've been forced to admit that, yes, okay, there was this spillover between Hunter's business deals and the vice president's duties. And, and this, I think, is a huge problem because it fits the pattern again. Joe Biden is point person on Ukraine. His son gets a sweetheart deal. Joe Biden is point person on China. His son gets another sweetheart deal. All right, stay right there. I mean, this is really, really an incredible story that the media mob will never tell you. It's unbelievable. All right, our final moments, Peter Schweitzer, uh, his book, Secret Empires. He's also the Government uh, Accountability Institute president. And, of course, John Solomon, investigative reporter, executive vice president uh, of The Hill. All right, so we talked about China and the amount of money there. How did he get hooked into Rosemont, you know, Seneca Partners in the first place? And, John, you've also done some reporting on this. And $1.5 billion, and he has no background or experience in private equity except he got involved in a case where the company got sued once so my question is you know I, 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 that is a massive amount of money how much of the 1.5 billion did he get it's a great question we don't know the answer yet sean of how much actually flowed we know what the deal terms were from what's been announced publicly but we don't know the total amount of money that has flowed into those accounts yet uh, i don't know if peter has had a chance to find that out but in the uh, in the work I've done, the actual amount of funds that transferred has been uh, unclear. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. And this is part of the problem, Sean. I mean, if you think about it, Joe Biden is vice president. If he has $5,000 in GE stock, he's required to disclose it. If he takes a campaign contribution of, say, $500, he has to disclose it. But if his son does a deal with a foreign government, the Chinese government, our chief rival on the global stage, there's no disclosure requirement. And that's part of the problem. So we don't know how much Hunter was paid. We know that Hunter joined the board uh, of this company. We know that his uh, business partner, uh, Devin Archer, was the vice chairman of the investment committee of this company, which was called Bohai Harvest RST. Uh, and we know that that company went on to make some very curious uh, investments in companies in the United States that um, developed dual-use technologies that are highly precise machine tools that have civilian application, but also military applications. So this whole question of what is Bohai Harvest doing, it's financed by the Chinese government itself, but it seems to be playing this role in acquiring high-tech assets in the West. 
Uh, one of their investments was in a company called CGN, China General Nuclear. Uh, that company, after Hunter Biden's firm invested in it, uh, was implicated by the FBI in uh, stealing nuclear secrets in the United States. So it's not just the payoff and the cronyism and the corruption. There's a huge national security component here, too. That's a huge part. We'll get into it tonight. Uh, great work.